Hey guys, I can start without an introduction. Yes. Oh. My name is Pat Elder, and um, I, uh, I wrote a book called Military Recruiting in the United States, and um, I, yeah. um, I'm the director of the National Coalition to Protect Student Privacy. Um, I'm a, a native Washingtonian. Uh, but the very ground uh, where, um, that's under us was once used by the Army during World War I to test lewisite, a lethal gas made of arsenic. Soldiers tied <clears throat> animals to stakes and set off chemical bombs to see how quickly the animals died. This area was densely covered with deadly biological agents and soldiers buried remaining stockpiles after testing. Perchlorate and arsenic are present in heavy concentrations in the groundwater under this building. It is deadly forever. In addition, there are six military Superfund sites that poison the Potomac River close to this building. It's clear the Pentagon doesn't give a damn about our precious environment, and they're just as irresponsible in the nation's high schools. You can flip to the second slide and uh, move it up to 255. This is a clip from Grissom High School, the Army J. Rotsey Marksmanship Program in Huntsville, Alabama. Love you, Brianne. Watch for the plume of smoke. There you go. Cut that. I came to talk about that plume of smoke loaded with lead particulate matter. Children are being poisoned through their participation in the Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps Marksmanship Program in the high schools. Air gun rifles used in high schools across the country discharge lead at the muzzle end of the firing line and at the target. J. Razzi officials feel it's unnecessary to clean their guns regularly. That's because every pellet being fired down the barrel scrapes out the deposits of lead from the pellets that went before. In fact, the manual on standard operating procedures published by the J. Razzi Cadet Command says it's recommended to clean rifles every 1,000 to 2,000 shots. You look at this third slide, it's extremely telling. You can actually see the lead particulate matter from the muzzle end of an air rifle. They're in our classrooms. They take biology classrooms and they're, they're, they're in our gyms in Montgomery County, in Fairfax County, and in Washington, D.C., and across the country. You remember Ralphie? Well, the rifle that Ralphie got for Christmas um, it was a Daisy uh, Red Rider, and it, it shoots little steel pellets or BBs at 350 feet per second. Next slide, please. Okay, you can run that. Crossman, uh, the pellet. pellet pellets, uh, 1.77 uh, caliber, and um, I just want to open them up and kind of get a look. I don't want to touch it, but you can sort of see the lead um, uh, residue at the bottom. Pull it out like that. And uh, move some of this stuff over. And that is the lead residue right there. And it's a mess. And the kids are putting their fingers in here. And God only knows how much they're ingesting. Thank you. Next slide, please. So the CDC says you're blood poisoned if you have more than five micrograms in your blood. Now listen to these statistics. A German study found that 20 individuals who shot only air guns showed a median blood level of 33 micrograms per deciliter. The journal Environmental Health reports that air gun shooters, after an indoor shooting session, 
had blood lead levels of 8.4 micrograms of lead per deciliter, with some as high as 22.2. Demler and Nowak, writing in the International Archives of Occupational and Environmental Health, also documented high blood levels in indoor air gun shooters. They linked blood lead and gun caliber for a single session. Their scale ran from 3.3 micrograms of lead per deciliter for air guns with some as high as 12.7 micrograms of lead per deciliter. A Swedish study looked at the air in an indoor firing range that was used exclusively for air guns and found that the air had levels an average of 4.6 micrograms per cubic meter. The EPA has established an air quality standard for lead at 1.5 micrograms per cubic meter. That's three times the level. We have a big problem. No one's paying attention about, to it because no one knows anything about it. Regularly firing lead projectiles indoors at 500 feet per second in programs involving 1,600 public high schools is insane public policy. Next slide, please. Now, the civilian marksmanship program says that, and this is a quote, and it's mentioned in several of their documents. Now, the civilian marksmanship program is charged by Congress to regulate firing weapons in the classrooms in the nation's high schools. And it says, quote, target shooting with air rifles and small bore rifles, so they include 22s, does not create real health effects for shooting sports participants. They say children can effectively minimize lead exposure by washing their hands after firing and by not consuming food or beverages on the range. And then you got NIOSH, and what do they say? Next slide, please. Civilian Marksmanship Program claims to have trained more than 4,000 JROTC instructors since 2005. The CMP sells the Army's discarded weaponry, especially rifles and ammo, to the American public. We're the only nation on earth to allow such lunacy. The privately owned Civilian Marksmanship Program holds $184.7 million insecurities by peddling the Pentagon's discarded weaponry to the American public with the blessing of Congress. It spends, it spends less than a half a million a year monitoring shooting programs in our high schools. There are 2,400 high schools with marksmanship programs now. It's proliferated tremendously in the last few years. Of these 1,600 used lead pellets, we are getting the word out. The CMP is a sweetheart of the NRA. Often, J. Rossi children attend events sponsored by the NRA. The NRA actively supports the establishment of new firing ranges in our schools. It's got to stop. After After Congress privatized the agency in 1996, it was established in 1903 after the Spanish-American War when the uh, Congress felt that Americans needed to get better training in rifle, sh rifle uh, shooting. Uh, Senator Paul Simon described the CMP as an incomprehensible, irresponsible, baffling boondoggle for the NRA. Don't forget it, folks. Civilian marksmanship program. It's a baddie. Put it in your head. Slide 10. The, the CMP's Guide to Lead Management is the rule book used by the J. Rotsi Marksmanship Programs. It relies on the findings of Health and Environmental Technology, LLC, HET, an environmental testing firm in Colorado Springs to dispel the notion that air guns shooting lead pellets create airborne particles. So employee of HET is Mr. Robert Rodasevich 
Based on the finding by Mr. Rodasevich, the civilian marksmanship program says normal ventilation systems are fine for shooting ranges in American high schools and in private gun clubs where the CMP affiliated clubs practice. Rodasevich came under scrutiny in Colorado in 2012 for gross technical incompetence in technical compliance. Colorado health officials said Rodasevich violated state regulations by entirely, entirely failing to demonstrate that he has any kind of knowledge in performing environmental work of any kind. <laughs> Meanwhile, the work performed by Rodasevich for the CMP is cited by high school officials across the country who are forced to defend the presence of indoor firing ranges in their school systems by parents concerned about the potentially harmful effects of lead contamination. It's outrageous. Next slide, please. These kids are in Flint, Michigan. Damn, you'd think that they'd be interested in this in Flint. So, you know, the picture is on the internet, and so I emailed the principal about the potential for lead contamination among the kids. I mean, I figured they already have enough lead in their systems. <laughs> and he, he referred me to the county health department, which referred me to the EPA, which referred me to the military, which never returned my call. The CMP recommends that school staff establish a lane to provide a designated walking path for the coach to follow while moving to the target line. At the target line, it's recommended that the designated target changer put on disposable shoe covers before walking over any of the lead residues that may be in front of the targets. Once targets are changed, the designated target changer should remove the disposable shoe covers before stepping onto the walking path and returning to the fire line. At Boca Siega High School in Gulfport, Florida, and Germantown High School in Ridgeland, Mississippi, students clean the ranges. At Cato Parish Schools in Louisiana, Mike, students clean ranges, but they're required to use respiratory equipment to protect themselves from airborne lead. Obviously, uniform Enforcement is lacking. Slide 12, please. And if you would just turn this on, you guys will get the flavor of the psychology. Run the whole thing, please. Listen to the psychology here, man. I've been studying these people for, for over a generation. You know, and he says, Not everyone is privileged enough to have a school that is so supportive. I mean, this is an inner city school for troubled, mostly African American youth up in uh, Rochester. It's condescending to its core, and it represents the diabolical intersection of racism and classism and militarism. J. Rotsi instructors are the only non-degreed personnel allowed to teach credited courses in, in our high schools. You're liable to get a 10-second ad for a car, for cars or something. Squad. JROTC has curriculum that supports marksmanship safety. Um, not everyone is privileged enough to have a school that's so supportive of something like this. Your finger will only be on your trigger when you are aiming at your target and you are ready to fire on that target. So we really wanted to have something permanent and something the kids could call their own in a competition setting. The boiler room was available. It really wasn't in great shape at the time. At first, they were a little bit like, can this even happen? This is just, this is just too much, you know. Sergeant Meister, we can't get this clean. We can't do this. And, you know, and together, uh, they started to see um, their progress, saying, hey, can we stay for another period and keep cleaning? You know, we'd love for them to do that, but you, you got to get to class. If they're not disciplined in their class, then I don't expect them to be disciplined on the range. And it's a privilege to do this with us. Uh, we would like them all to participate, uh, but we monitor their grades nonstop. Uh, teacher input um, to us about JROTC students is very important to us. Um, they can excel at JROTC, but if they can't pass their regents exams, then, then we're really not doing our job. And, and so we need to find innovative ways to keep the kids excited to come to school where attendance is sometimes a struggle. And if this entices them to come so that the other um, classes are met, and that's what we're here to do. We know that these kids are handling um, 
weapons out there. I can't be with them all the time to encourage them not to do that. And so by our teaching, we're hoping that we're teaching them to handle the muzzle, do not put your finger on the trigger, and to remind other people, first of all, that having a gun is wrong, you know, and why do you have it, but why is it also pointed at somebody? You know, to me, in Sergeant Legault, that's a reward, you know, that we've taught them something that I'm hoping that they'll carry on for a very long time and then teach that to other people as well. All right, just one more video. This one uh, from uh, Freeport High School in Illinois. Uh, if you could scoot up to, you know, two minutes and 50 seconds, it should be a little bit uh, less painful if you can load it. Um, but it, it, you know, like this one, it shows kids walking through the discharge of lead on the floor at the muzzle end of the gun on their way down to the lead-filled target backstop. September shoots all the way through January. We just shot our last one on the 13th of February. That we actually travel all over uh, Illinois, northern Illinois, and shoot at other high schools. And then there's also postal competitions where we shoot it here at our range and we mail it off to whoever's hosting the postal competition. Quite often, youth groups is affiliated with high school JROTC programs are forced to use commercial firing ranges where 22 caliber rifles and larger guns are regularly fired. The nation has an estimated 6,000 commercial indoor and outdoor gun ranges, but only 201 have been inspected in the last decade. According to the Seattle Times analysis of the Occupational Safety and Haz Health Administration um, records that is ongoing, Although the CMP says it ensures inspectors of JROTC firing ranges, somebody dropped the ball in Vancouver, Washington at the Vancouver Rifle and Pistol Club, a CMP monitored affiliate. In 2010, blood tests revealed that 20 youths had been exposed to lead after shooting in the club's dirty and poorly ventilated range. Lead on the floor was a thousand times higher than federal housing guideline, guidelines for allowable lead on surfaces. JROTC teams and the young Marines from schools in the district regularly shoot there. It should be noted that the young Marines is open to all children from third grade up. These children love firing weapons. When schools across the country don't use their own classrooms and gyms for shooting ranges, they go to places like this. We, were very, we weren't very cautious, said one kid. We would get lead on our hands and eat finger food. One minute. Investigators found the ventilation failed to move the airborne lead particles downrange away from the shooters. Children inhaled lead, ate lead, absorbed lead through skin contact and dirty surfaces. In 2013, a group of us in Montgomery County, Maryland, approached district officials regarding our concerns for lead exposure in regular classrooms, biology classrooms, algebra classrooms, um, you know, classrooms, uh, PE classrooms, you know the kind of classrooms where you have the curtain in between? They just open them up, fourth period, bring in the guns. One Montgomery minute. school officials cited the Rotosevich research. There's no problem. Wash your hands, it doesn't get in the air. Montgomery said children who participate in air rifle shooting can effectively minimize their lead exposure by washing their hands and after shooting and by not consuming food or beverages, word for word. Fairfax County, Virginia was a different story. They were confronted by another group of, of determined, organized parents. Unlike Montgomery, Fairfax immediately took action. Once the central office became aware of the firing ranges. They didn't even know they existed. Mm -hmm. After they found library. out they existed, they ordered lead testing. Lead dust covered everything in the classrooms where the test was conducted. The county shut down the ranges, they hired high dollar contractors, they cleaned out lead from all of the rooms, and they banned lead from, uh, from all facilities in Fairfax County. Yeah. And let's start so dropping it. Fairfax off. bans the lead ammunition, but Montgomery says it's okay. The CMP has developed stringent rules, but their enforcement is lacking and their suggested procedures are misguided. For instance, to clean up the deposits of lead at the firing line and target area, the CMP advises a periodic wet mopping with a solution of water and tri-sodium 
phosphate should do the trick. However, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development bans trisodium phosphate because it is so incredibly damaging to the environment. Mm, yeah. We've seen high school students cross the firing line. When the class period is over, floors may remain unclean, the firing line disappears, the furniture is rearranged, and the next group of kids file in for an unrelated academic subject. Meanwhile, the lead dust is stirred into the air, picked up by kids on their shoes and their hair and their clothing and their backpacks to be transported throughout the school. Yeah. Kids become like dust mops, spreading the deadly material throughout the building. Yes. Next Let's, slide, please. Yeah, I was going to say, one minute, <laughs> 30, <Cool>. 30 seconds. <laughs> I want to thank Mary Leopold. Is Mary here? Where's Mary? Mary, stand up. Yay! I love Mary! You know, she's like, she knows what a predicate nominative is. You know? Like, like with the commas and the quotes, she knows all that stuff. So I, I would write this pile of mess and she'd go, and she'd clean it up. Oh my gosh, what, what a saintly woman. I love her. But that's it. Thank you very much.